My engagement party turned into a nightmare when my girlfriend declared her love for my childhood best friend. I never thought I'd be writing a post like this, but here I am. My name is Steven, 29 male, and I've been dating Mia, 28 female, for the past 5 years. We met during our junior year of college at a mutual friend's birthday party. I remember being struck by her infectious laugh and the way her eyes lit up when she talked about her passion for marine biology. We hit it off immediately, bonding over our shared love of the ocean and bad sci-fi movies. Our relationship grew slowly but steadily. We started as friends, studying together in the library and grabbing coffee between classes. As we spent more time together, our feelings deepened. I'll never forget our first kiss, it was after a late night study session, and we were walking back to her dorm. The moonlight caught her hair just right, and I couldn't resist leaning in. It felt like everything clicked into place at that moment. After graduation, we both landed jobs in the same city. Mia started working at the local aquarium, while I began my career in marketing. We moved in together after a year, and our life seemed perfect. We had our ups and downs like any couple, but overall, our relationship was solid. We complimented each other well, Mia's spontaneity balanced out my tendency to overplan, and my calm demeanor helped ground her when she got stressed. My best friend since childhood, Ryan, 30 male, has always been a big part of my life. We grew up on the same street, went to the same schools, and even ended up working at the same company. Ryan was there for me through thick and thin, from my first heartbreak in high school to the loss of my grandmother in college. I considered him more of a brother than just a friend. When I first introduced Mia to Ryan at a backyard barbecue I hosted, they seemed to get along well. I remember feeling relieved, it was important to me that my girlfriend and my best friend could be friends too. Over the years, we all hung out together often, going on double dates with Ryan and his girlfriends or just having game nights at our apartment. Ryan had always been a bit of a ladies' man, never settling down with one person for too long. I used to tease him about it, joking that one day he'd meet his match and finally settle down. He would always laugh it off, saying he was too young to be tied down. I never thought much of it, that was just Ryan being Ryan. About six months ago, I decided it was time to take the next step with Mia. We had been talking about marriage for a while, and it felt like the right time. I bought a ring, a beautiful sapphire surrounded by small diamonds, because Mia always said traditional engagement rings were overrated. I planned a romantic proposal at the beach where we had our first date. The day of the proposal, I was a nervous wreck. I must have checked my pocket a hundred times to make sure the ring was still there. We walked along the shoreline as the sun was setting, and I couldn't help but think how perfect everything was. When we reached the spot where we had our first kiss, I got down on one knee and asked Mia to marry me. Her eyes filled with tears as she said yes, and I felt like the luckiest man alive. We started planning our wedding, and everything seemed perfect. Mia threw herself into the preparations, researching venues and flipping through bridal magazines. I was happy to let her take the lead, helping out where I could but mostly just enjoying seeing her so excited. Last weekend, we had our engagement party. Our families and close friends gathered at a local restaurant to celebrate our upcoming marriage. Ryan, being my best friend, was of course invited. He even gave a heartfelt speech about our friendship and how happy he was for us. I remember feeling so grateful at that moment, surrounded by the people I loved most in the world. The party was in full swing, and everyone was having a great time. The restaurant had set up a small dance floor, and people were taking turns showing off their moves. I noticed that Mia was drinking more than usual, but I didn't think much of it at the time. I figured she was just excited and letting loose a bit. As the night went on, Mia became visibly drunk. She was stumbling around and slurring her words. I tried to get her to slow down on the drinks, offering her water instead, but she brushed me off, saying she was fine. I should have insisted more, but I didn't want to cause a scene at our engagement party. Looking back, I wish I had been more firm. Towards the end of the night, Mia suddenly grabbed the microphone from the DJ. I thought she was going to make a speech, maybe thank everyone for coming. But what came out of her mouth left me and everyone else in shock. Mia started by saying how grateful she was that everyone came to celebrate with us. But then her tone changed. She said, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with Ryan. I've been in love with him for years. The room fell silent. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It felt like the floor had dropped out from under me. Mia continued, I'm sorry, Stephen, but I can't marry you. You're a great guy, but my heart belongs to Ryan. I stood there, frozen in place, as Mia stumbled towards Ryan. She tried to hug him, but he stepped back, looking as shocked and uncomfortable as I felt. My parents quickly intervened, leading Mia away while she continued to profess her love for Ryan. The party ended abruptly after that. Guests started leaving, giving me pitying looks as they went. My family tried to comfort me, but I was too numb to really process what had just happened. My mom hugged me tightly, whispering that everything would be okay, but I couldn't see how that was possible. Ryan approached me, his face pale. He swore to me that he had no idea about Mia's feelings and that he would never betray me like that. I believe him, the look of genuine shock on his face when Mia made her confession was unmistakable. Still, I couldn't help but feel a distance growing between us. How could our friendship ever be the same after this? It's been a few days since the engagement party, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything. Mia has been trying to contact me, leaving voicemails apologizing and saying she was just drunk and didn't mean what she said. But how can I believe that? How can I unhear her confession of love for my best friend? I've been staying at my parents' house, unable to face going back to the apartment Mia and I shared. My mom has been trying to get me to eat, but I've lost my appetite. My dad keeps telling me that I'm better off finding out now rather than after we were married, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. I feel so betrayed and lost. The future I had planned with Mia has crumbled before my eyes. Every time I close my eyes, I see her stumbling towards Ryan, declaring her love for him. I can't help but wonder how long she's felt this way. Were there signs I missed? Was I just too blind to see what was happening right in front of me? I don't know how to move forward from this. Should I hear Mia out? 
Is there any coming back from something like this? And what about my friendship with Ryan? Even though I know he didn't do anything wrong, I can't help but feel weird around him now. The thought of them together makes me sick to my stomach. I've been avoiding social media, unable to face the pitying messages I know are waiting for me. A few close friends have reached out, offering support, but I don't know what to say to them. How do you explain that your entire world has been turned upside down in a single night? I could really use some advice on how to handle this situation. Has anyone been through something similar? How did you cope? How do you rebuild your life when the two people you trusted most have betrayed you? Any words of wisdom would be greatly appreciated. Update 1. It's been two weeks since my last post, and a lot has happened. First of all, thank you to everyone who offered advice and support. Your kind words and shared experiences have been a lifeline during this difficult time. After taking some time to process everything, I decided to meet with Mia to hear her out. We agreed to meet at a neutral location, a small coffee shop near my work. As I waited for her to arrive, I found myself nervously fidgeting with my coffee cup, unsure of what to expect. When Mia walked in, I barely recognized her. She looked terrible, with dark circles under her eyes and a defeated posture. Her usually vibrant red hair was pulled back in a messy ponytail, and she seemed to have lost weight. As much as I was hurting, seeing her like this didn't bring me any satisfaction. Mia started by apologizing profusely for what happened at the engagement party. She swore up and down that she didn't mean what she said and that it was just the alcohol talking. According to her, she had been feeling stressed about the wedding planning and drank too much to calm her nerves. She claimed that her confession was just a manifestation of cold feet and pre-wedding jitters. I listened to her explanation, trying to keep an open mind. But something didn't sit right with me. I asked her point blank if she had any feelings for Ryan. Mia hesitated before answering, and that's when I knew there was more to the story. After some prodding, Mia finally admitted that she had developed a crush on Ryan over the years. She claimed it was just a harmless attraction and that she never acted on it or told anyone about it. She insisted that she loved me and wanted to marry me, and that her feelings for Ryan were just a fantasy that got out of hand when she was drunk. I asked her why she never told me about these feelings before. Mia said she was afraid of ruining our relationship and my friendship with Ryan. She thought she could just ignore her attraction to Ryan and it would go away. As she spoke, I couldn't help but think back to all the times we had hung out together, wondering if there had been signs I had missed. Mia begged for another chance, saying that she would go to therapy to work through her issues and that she would do anything to regain my trust. She even suggested that we could cut Ryan out of our lives if that would make me feel better. But the more she talked, the more I felt that there was still something she wasn't telling me. After our meeting, I couldn't shake the feeling that I didn't have the whole truth. I decided to do some digging. I know it's not right to invade someone's privacy, but I felt I needed to know everything before I could even consider moving forward. I checked Mia's phone records, we're on a shared plan, and discovered that she and Ryan had been texting each other frequently, often late at night when I was asleep. The volume of messages was far more than what I would expect between my fiancé and my best friend. My heart sank as I scrolled through the log, seeing how often they had been in contact without my knowledge. With this new information, I asked Mia to meet me again. This time, I confronted her with what I had found. Faced with the evidence, Mia broke down and confessed that she and Ryan had been having an emotional affair for the past year. They never got physical, but they had been sharing intimate conversations and flirting with each other behind my back. I was devastated. Not only had Mia betrayed me, but Ryan, my best friend since childhood, had also stabbed me in the back. I felt like my whole world was crumbling around me. All the memories we had shared together now felt tainted, and I couldn't help but wonder if any of it had been real. Mia tried to explain, saying that it had started innocently enough. She and Ryan had bonded over their shared love of photography, something I had never been particularly interested in. What began as discussions about camera equipment and techniques had gradually evolved into more personal conversations. She swore that they had never meant for it to go as far as it did, but they found themselves drawn to each other. I asked her why she had agreed to marry me if she had feelings for Ryan. Mia broke down in tears, saying that she did love me and that she had convinced herself that her feelings for Ryan were just a phase. She thought that by committing to me, she could force herself to get over him. As much as a small part of me wanted to believe her, to find a way to salvage our relationship, I knew that the trust between us had been irreparably broken. I told Mia that our relationship was over and that she needed to move out of our shared apartment. She begged and pleaded, but I stood firm in my decision. As for Ryan, I sent him a message telling him I knew everything and that I never wanted to see or hear from him again. He tried to call me multiple times, but I couldn't bring myself to answer. The thought of hearing his voice, of listening to him try to explain away his betrayal, was more than I could bear. Right now, I'm still staying with my parents while I figure out what to do next. I'm hurt, angry, and feeling completely lost. The two people I trusted most in this world have betrayed me in the worst possible way. Every happy memory I had with them now feels tainted, and I find myself questioning everything I thought I knew about our relationships. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I know I need to focus on healing and moving forward. I've started looking for a therapist to help me work through my feelings of betrayal and learn to trust again. It's going to be a long road, but I'm determined to come out stronger on the other side. Has anyone been through something similar? How did you rebuild your life after such a betrayal? Any advice on how to deal with the anger and hurt I'm feeling would be greatly appreciated. Update 2. It's been a month since my last update, and I wanted to share what's been happening. First of all, thank you again to everyone who offered support and advice. It really means a lot to know that there are people out there who care. After the initial shock wore off, I decided to take some time for myself. I took a leave of absence from work and went on a solo trip to clear my head. I spent two weeks hiking in the mountains, pushing my body to its limits during the day and sitting around campfires at night, reflecting on my life and relationships. It was during this trip that I realized how much I had lost myself in my relationship with Mia and my friendship with Ryan. I had always been the type of person to put others first, often at the expense of my own needs and desires. 
This experience forced me to confront that tendency and recognize the importance of maintaining my own identity within relationships. While I was away, both Mia and Ryan continued to try to contact me. They left voicemails, sent texts, and even reached out to my family. Mia begged for another chance, saying she had made a huge mistake and that she wanted to work things out. She claimed that she had started seeing a therapist and was working on her issues. Ryan, on the other hand, kept insisting that nothing physical had happened between them and that he valued our friendship too much to ever cross that line. I ignored all their attempts to communicate. I needed space to process everything and figure out what I wanted to do next. The peace and solitude of the mountains helped me gain perspective on the situation. When I returned from my trip, I felt more clear-headed. I decided it was time to face both Mia and Ryan and get some closure. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I felt it was necessary for my healing process. I met with Mia first. We met at a park, neutral ground that held no memories for us. She looked terrible, like she hadn't been sleeping or eating well. Part of me felt bad for her, but I reminded myself of the pain she had caused me. Mia once again apologized and begged for another chance. She said she had started therapy to work on her issues and that she realized how much she loved me. As much as a small part of me wanted to believe her, I knew I could never trust her again. The image of her stumbling towards Ryan at our engagement party, declaring her love for him, was seared into my memory. I told her that our relationship was over for good and that I hoped she would get the help she needed to be a better person in the future. Mia broke down crying, asking if there was anything she could do to change my mind. I stood firm, telling her that sometimes, trust once broken can't be repaired. I wished her well but made it clear that I didn't want her in my life anymore. Next, I met with Ryan. This was harder for me because our friendship had meant so much to me over the years. We met at the basketball court where we used to play as kids, a place that held many happy memories for us. Ryan tried to explain himself, saying that he never meant for things to go as far as they did with Mia. He swore that he never had romantic feelings for her and that he was just flattered by her attention. He claimed that he had wanted to tell me about Mia's messages but was afraid of ruining our friendship. I listened to what Ryan had to say, but in the end, I told him that our friendship was over. Even if nothing physical had happened between him and Mia, the emotional betrayal was just as painful. I couldn't imagine ever trusting him again or looking at him without thinking about his betrayal. Ryan seemed devastated by my decision. He reminded me of all the history we shared, the good times we had together. For a moment, I felt my resolve weaken. But then I remembered the countless text messages between him and Mia, the late-night conversations they had behind my back. I told Ryan that while I appreciated the good times we had shared, his actions had irreparably damaged our friendship. I wished him well but made it clear that I needed to move on without him in my life. Both Mia and Ryan seemed devastated by my decisions, but I knew I was doing the right thing for myself. I've realized that I deserve better than a partner who would emotionally cheat on me and a friend who would betray my trust. Now, I'm focusing on rebuilding my life. I've moved into a new apartment in a different part of the city. It's smaller than the place I shared with Mia, but it feels good to have a space that's entirely my own. I'm throwing myself into my work and rediscovering hobbies that I had let fall by the wayside during my relationship. It's not easy, and there are still days when the pain of betrayal hits me hard. Sometimes I find myself missing the familiarity of my life with Mia, or the easy companionship I had with Ryan. But then I remind myself of their betrayal and the progress I've made in healing. I've started seeing a therapist to work through my trust issues and the pain of betrayal. It's been helpful to have a neutral party to talk to about everything that's happened. She's been helping me recognize patterns in my past relationships and develop healthier boundaries for the future. Has anyone else had to cut ties with their partner and best friend at the same time? How did you cope with losing two of the most important people in your life simultaneously? Any advice on rebuilding trust in future relationships would be greatly appreciated. Update 3. It's been six months since this whole ordeal began, and I wanted to give one final update on my situation. A lot has changed, and I'm in a much better place now. After cutting ties with both Mia and Ryan, I focused on healing and personal growth. I've continued seeing my therapist regularly, which has been incredibly helpful in processing my emotions and learning to move forward. Through our sessions, I've come to understand that while the betrayal wasn't my fault, there were patterns in my relationships that I needed to address. I've also reconnected with old friends and made some new ones. I joined a local sports league and a book club, which has helped me meet people with similar interests. It's been refreshing to form new connections without the baggage of my past relationship and friendship. I've found that being open about my experiences has actually brought me closer to people, as many have shared their own stories of heartbreak and betrayal. As for Mia and Ryan, I've heard through mutual friends that they're no longer in contact with each other. Apparently, the guilt of what they did has driven a wedge between them. I can't say I feel sorry for them, but I hope they've learned from this experience and won't hurt anyone else in the future. I've had a few people suggest that I should try to forgive Mia and Ryan, saying that holding on to anger isn't healthy. While I understand where they're coming from, I've realized that forgiveness doesn't mean I have to let them back into my life. I've forgiven them for my own peace of mind, but I have no interest in rekindling any kind of relationship with either of them. On a positive note, I've started dating again. I met a wonderful woman named Lily, 27F, through a mutual friend at a charity event. We've been taking things slow, and I've been upfront about my past experiences. Lily has been incredibly understanding and patient with me as I navigate this new relationship. She's helped me remember that not everyone is out to hurt me and that it's okay to be vulnerable again. Looking back, I can see now that there were red flags in my relationship with Mia and my friendship with Ryan that I chose to ignore. This experience has taught me a lot about setting boundaries and trusting my instincts. I'm more aware of my own needs and I'm not afraid to communicate them. To anyone going through a similar situation, I want to say that it does get better. It takes time and effort, but you can rebuild your life after betrayal. Focus on yourself, surround yourself with supportive people, and don't be afraid to seek professional help if you need it. Thank you to everyone who has followed my story and offered support along the way. Your kind words and advice have been a lifeline during this difficult time.
I'm looking forward to the future with optimism and a renewed sense of self-worth.